Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland and I am going to do a stream. This is part two of my Streamberry um, series. The Streamberry, for those who don't know, uh, is something I'm going to try and build um, based on a Raspberry Pi and it's going to be some, some kind of clone of those fancy stream decks uh, that you can find uh, in all respectable stores uh, that will cost you a lot of money uh, but it's good product it's good quality um, what i'm going to try to do is uh, build something that uh, does kind of the same thing but uh, for a lot cheaper using a raspberry pi and a touch screen uh, this is going to be written in Python. Uh, you can refer to the part one of this series that has been streamed and archived on YouTube um, uh, quite a while ago. Um, it took me a while to um, figure out how I'm going to do things. So we are August uh, uh, Tuesday, August 3, 2021. This is originally streamed on, on Twitch and it's going to be archived on YouTube in case you're looking at you're watching this um, in the future uh, we're going to introduce the Google protocol buffer um, so what's what is the Google protocol buffer I can actually uh, switch scenes here and go to full screen scene um, so this uh, this is the um, website for the Google Protocol Buffer, and what's uh, what's important is this: uh, Protocol Buffers are Google's language neutral platform neutral extensible me mechanism for serializing structured data. So basically, it's a language where you describe um, your your uh, messages, your your protocol, and if I can find an example, so this is how you describe your protocol. Uh, so you put that in a package, although in Python it doesn't matter which package you put that in. Um, and then you define your uh, different elements. So what's going in, in your in your classes, and then you can send that. Uh, you can send those protocols, those buffers, uh, either on on a socket um, to connect a client to a server and, and talk uh, like that or serialize that in a file, why not? So send that to a database or whatever you want to do. It's a way to serialize, it's an easy way to serialize an object to a binary form. But what is, what is really interesting, I think, is that it, as it says, it's platform and language agnostic. So as a package mentor, as a server, uh, um, maintainer um, for my program, for example, I will decide what protocol I want to use, what 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 the server understands, and then I would I, I would um, provide the uh, protocol as, uh, in, in that uh, language that we just saw, and we're going to see in more details in a moment. And Anyone who wants to connect to my server can just take those files, compile that for their platform in their language. It uh, doesn't matter uh, that the server is written in Python. Um, so just use that and compile. I don't know if you want to do a, a, an iOS app, you can. Um, I'm sure there's a, a, a Swift transpiler that will convert the uh, protocols uh, to Swift. Um, if you want to do that on on Android, you can, uh, I'm sure there's a Kotlin plugin to, to do that. Um, sh there's a Java plugin. I think if we go back to the, the main page, if I switch back to the uh, full screen view here, we can see here there's a C++, C Sharp, Dart, Go, Java, and Python implementation provided by Google, but I'm pretty sure there's a lots of other languages available uh, somewhere. So yeah, so I, I just provide the uh, protocol and then uh, anyone can um, build a client and talk to the server. But what I'm going to do is use that for both the server 
and the client. So just to recap what Streamberry will be, there's going to there will be a server part that's going to run on the PC, uh, probably. Probably the same machine as the um, as the one that runs OBS, but not necessarily because we can talk to OBS via WebSockets, so it could be on another machine. And there will be a client which is going to be the Raspberry Pi. And when the Raspberry Pi starts, it will uh, ask the server, "Give me your configuration." So basically, what's on the first page I need to um, to display? Uh, what are the um, the icons? Uh, and type of buttons, I think. Um, I, I have an idea that there's going to have, um, there's going to be two kinds of buttons, maybe three, but we'll see that later when we dive into the, the development of those buttons. But then you press a button and it will send an action to the server. Um, the client won't do anything. And then the server does the action and sends a response back. So we need a way to talk between the client and the server, and that's where the Google protocol buffers or protobuf um, comes uh, in play. So um, I'm going to just quickly recap, uh, quickly show, not recap, but show where we were last time um, when we did the um, part one of this series. Uh, so we had a server which didn't do much and then we had a client which sent an hello world to the server and the server did write that. So let's uh, have a look at the code quickly. Uh, this is our server, the code for the server. So what we did, we used ZeroConf, which is a library that allows us to, um, to register a server and then using that same library on the client, we can discover the client without any um, configuration at all. So we create a socket, we bind the socket to uh, any any free port, first free port, I guess, uh, on any uh, network interface. We listen for one connection at a time, and then we uh, get the IP and port number of um, that socket. We register the service. Uh, here, so we define a service and we register a service here, and then we enter a infinite loop, and we accept one connection from client, and with that client we read 248 uh, bytes. Uh, if there's no data, so that means um, there was a problem, so we break out of this infinite loop, and if we do have data, we print that data, and if we press a uh, if we press Ctrl C to exit, then we can exit the, although that doesn't seem to work very well, but that's okay. It's just an example for now. And that's the client, and the client does very little to it. Um, it finds, it looks for a service, and then once it's got the service, it's, it's uh, connecting to the address it found in the service, and then it sends hello world. And so, uh, go back to that. That's what we've seen here. We've seen the, this hello world in the server coming from the client, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to uh, Visual Studio Code. So how does, um, how does that work, um, the uh, protocol buffer? Um, Google provides a, a binary, which is protoc or proto compiler. Um, and we can uh, see that there's a lot, there's lots of options, and we can see we have uh, Ruby output, Python output, PHP output, Objective C output, uh, JavaScript output, Java output, C sharp output, and C output. So that's baked into the uh, protocol buffer compiler uh, right now. And if that is not enough, I'm pretty sure you can find something. Um, the way it works, um, we will write uh, a file and that file needs to be compiled. But we have Visual Studio and Visual Studio has a VS Code Proto 
bringing extension, which is just great because with a little bit of configuration, we have this magic option here, compile and save, which is just great because now we don't have to do anything. So let's dive into uh, into that. Let's uh, write our, a sample. Let's see how that works. So we're going to write the sample.proto. Uh, uh, I need to uh, refresh. No, I don't want this. Go away. Um, I need to refresh my memory, which uh, might not be as uh, easy as we think it could be. Uh, okay, so we need to start by telling the compiler which syntax we're going to use, and we're going to use the Proto 2 syntax. Uh, there's a Proto 3 syntax, which is version 3 of the of buffers, but uh, I, I haven't noticed anything that I can use um, right now. So 2 or 3, it's basically the same. Um, we can uh, give it a package name. I'm going to call that sample. The package. It doesn't matter because Python will use. Oops. Python will use. We won't use the package name. It will use the um, directory uh, as uh, modules, as as it is the given standard in Python. So um, now we're going to write uh, our message. So let's. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the sample uh, that uh, that's on the Google website at the moment. Um, we're going to do a little ping pong between uh, the uh, client and the server. So the client will send ping message and the, the server will respond with pong message uh, so that both know that the other is still alive. Um, but although my example, the client will disconnect right after receiving the, the answer, but that's another uh, question. So let's have a message. Our message will be ping. And do we want to add some parameters? I don't know. Um, hello, cheese bacon. Uh, thank you uh, for the nice comments. Yes, I uh, my scenes. I, I worked uh, on, on this thing and I like it uh, too. I still have to make the end of stream uh, scene or layout or uh, overlay or I don't know how, how who kids call that uh, these days. Uh, but yeah, um, this um, I said, well, I can actually show off a little bit by bringing the uh, the webcam. No, that's the chat I wanted to uh, bring. Uh, so this, this, um, this layout is, uh, is cool too. Uh, yeah, it took me a while to do that, but uh, maybe someday I will do a video or a stream on how I did that. It's not that complex, but it takes a lot of time for the um, the animations to to be right uh, and the uh, the audio to be in sync. Okay, let's go back to our full screen view. And uh, do we want to send a, uh, uh, some? Some data. Let's let's say we want. Okay. Let's say we want to make sure the response we get from the server is actually you know a response to the message we sent. So let's uh, have an optional string uh, payload. Why not? Why not? Uh, and so in order to write a protocol, you would have this thing, message, and then the name of the message. That's going to be transformed into a, an object, a class in Python. And then optional string payload is going to become an attribute of that class. And then the, the, the syntax of the, um, uh, the protocol buffer uh, format um, says that we need to give a number that's um that's how the protocol will serialize and deserialize the attributes it's not actually gonna send that name payload on the wire it's gonna send one so it's going to say 
for this class, attribute one as this value. And so you need to uh, add uh, a number. So if we, if we had another uh, attribute, let's say, I don't know, uh, timestamp, then we would do that, something like that. And that's actually in 64. And we would do something like that. Um, let's, uh, well, let's, let's, let's do that. Okay. So, as I save this, you can see that uh, it generated uh, some code here. Uh, it's, it's here in this um, directory because of the settings I have here. So, uh, the protopath is um, where the dot proto files live. And then the Python out is the directory in which that uh, thing is going to be generated. Now, uh, let's see. Huh. I have a problem somewhere. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, let's have a look at the code. As you can see, it's pretty unreadable, but we don't care because we actually don't want to see that. We don't want to mess with that. It's generated stuff. Um, we don't want to deal with that. I don't want to save that. I probably made a mistake by editing that, but that's okay. <coughs> so this is the ping message. And um, let's have a honk message. And let's say that this is going to send uh, uh, the payload back. Okay, so this one is gonna only is only gonna have a an attribute, right? Now, what do I do with that? Well, I'm going to first go to my client, and I'm going to import. Uh, SS, uh, where am I? Am I there? I'm going to import gen.proto.sample. And actually, I'm going to use that this way. From there, import ping. Ping, that's all. That's all I need. Okay, so instead of sending this, which is the hello world we sent previously, we're going to comment that and we're going to create a ping message. So let's do that. Message equals ping. Okay, message dot payload. So one problem with uh, with the um, protobuf uh, library or well, Python library is that it's it, it uses, if we go back to the, it uses some meta class and things like that. And so we don't really have a com um, completion in the um, ID. So if I do message payload equals uh, hello, um, VS Code is, is uh, telling me that. Uh, there's a problem that it, um, it this is unknown, but uh, as far as I know, it is not. So we'll see that when we execute the code. Uh, okay, so we have that. Now we need to uh, serialize this, and I need to have a look at my uh, at my at my uh, cheat sheet. <laughs> Uh, which is cellulose to spring, I think. Cellulose to spring, yes. So now I can do message that serialize to string. And I, I've got to figure out how to get the, the completion working. I'm sure there's something that I have missed, uh, probably. Uh, we'll see that. Uh, so this is the string we need. So. Um, I don't know how to call that. Uh, okay. Let's call that data. And then we want to send that over the, the wire. 
let's see if that is working. Yep. Uh, let's run our server, but the server won't understand a word of what we say. I run the client. Well, as we can see, the client did send something. It sent backslash n 0x7 hello. So 7 is probably the length of this string. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes. And so backslash n is what? 0x. 0x10 or is it 0x0? Zero zero? I don't know. I don't remember. But that 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 probably means it's a string and it's the first uh, it's the first parameter. So we did send something. We did send something to the server. It actually uh, went a lot better than what I was expecting. Uh, to be fair. Why is my, uh, isn't my, my stream, uh, stream chat working in OBS? I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to have a look at the, uh, the, the stream on the website to see if someone's speaking to me or writing to me. Okay. Our client is sending a message. Let's go to our server. And our server needs to read that message. So we did read the uh, data here. Now we need to pass from string, pass from this string. So we're going to import uh, from 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 gen dot photo dot sample import thing, and we want to we want to pass this message. So, um, ping equals ping, uh, ping dot pass from string and data. And let's print ping and see, and see what we have. And if it looks that easy, it's because it might be. Yes, it is. We have our payload here. Uh, that is um, hello. So let's do something a little bit more. Well, not a little bit more complex, but let's use our um, timestamp attribute and write a fake timestamp. One, two, three, four, five, six. And see if that is from one side to the other. There we go. Just like that. I have a a protocol and my client and my server are um, exchanging data. I'm pretty pleased. Now, if we wanted to send uh, data back to the client, uh, we would probably uh, we'd probably do what we would probably be in the server and here we would we would create a pong message okay we would say pong dot payload equals in the payload and then we would uh, client and send all and we would send that serialize to string and just like that we're sending a response back to our client did we break something look hmm apparently we did because the server is now exiting hmm. now that is not what i expected what happened? What happened? Well, I'm not going to spend too much time live on stream doing that. I would rather rather 
do something else, which is here. This is the server, right? So we are in an infinite loop. We're uh, waiting for a client connection. And then with that client connection, we are receiving some data and then we are um, we are reading a ping message. But it is more than likely that the message that is going to arrive, we don't we don't know if it's a ping message. It could be any kind of message. So if we do for example another message so instead of of being, well let's let's use the the pong message let's have the client send a pong message now instead of a ping message right and so there's no timestamp and it doesn't know it doesn't know what pong is so let's uh, say so now our server is expecting a ping message and our client is going to send a pong message which uh, you know can uh, it can happen well i didn't i didn't did not expect that but i guess because it, they both have the same attributes it was able to 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 do that so we're going to change that we're going to go to our sample proto and we're going to change, uh, we're going to remove this here and then the phone message, we're going to say greetings. Okay, so the client will go here and greetings, hello. Let's see if that changed something. Yes, apparently, we have a problem. Pong object has no should be greetings. Hmm. Why? Pong objects don't have greetings attribute. Really? Oh yes, that's because I wrote that in a very strange way. Let's do that again. Server and then in the plan. Hmm. It did it did something here why 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 it, it shouldn't have done that or maybe I made a mistake um I'm building a ping message and then I'm passing that let's print the row you don't mess up the client. Hello, master. Ah, I think I know. I think I know. And it does make perfect sense. Yes. So we are receiving this. But as I said earlier, what is transmitted uh, is the the I think uh, is the um, the serial number here. So if we're sending one in this thing and they're both strings, so it it I think it finds everything because of the same number that was here. Let's have a look. Yes, so now we've got the raw data, but it did not recognize anything. So that was that was it. So the fact that they were both both strings and had the same serial number, it was able to build a ping message from a pong message, which is something we don't want. We want we want the uh, the server to recognize what message we sent. So in order to do that, we are going to use a functionality from the Google Protobuf. We're going to use, um, we're going to use an any message. And how we do that is we're going to build our own messages, but that's not what we're going to transmit. We're going to 
pack this message, this phone message into an any message. So if memory serves, that's how you do that. And then you pack message here and then you send that over the wire. Uh, I think, I think, let's uh, see. Yes. So see, the, the, that was the previous message. That was the phone message that was sent uh, from the client to the server. And now that's the, the message that it sent uh, from the client to the server. So it's a lot longer, but uh, here we still have a problem because our server is still expecting a phone message, a ping message, sorry. But what we can do here is do the same thing. So we want an any message. We want to pass from string. Okay. So we still don't know what that is but now what we can do is if any is a phone the descriptor i think just out of the top of my head uh then we're going to unpack this that we're going to unpack that into a pong message. So we need to do to initialize the pong message and then unpack that and then print that. And then else if uh why did I do that? That's how you do it in Python. Any is ping dot this then ping ping uh, oh more thank you. Thing like that and back uh and back into ping and then right ping um why is it ah it doesn't know what pong is so there go um What's that? No, we don't want that. What did I do? Ah. I screwed up. But that's uh that's kind of the uh the idea. <laughs> uh why is it the expected expression while true? Yeah, it's hard to Fine now because of those. Oh, it doesn't know what any is because I mm, I didn't import that from Google dot photobuff dot any import any any thank you auto completion. Um, I still have a problem. This ooh. This is completely ridiculous. Why is it? What what did I do? Any equals any. Okay. Any pass from string. If any is pong pong. An impact ping pong ping pong pong. Ooh, I doubled all the lines. Ooh. Okay. And then ping 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 ping. Okay. Let's have a look. So far, so good. Uh, it says greetings, so that's good, which because it means it detected a pong message. Let's print something more. Um, pong message detected, and then ping message detected. Oops. Go back to here and then that and then that and phone message detected. Greetings, hello master. 
Good. Good. Let's go to the clan to our clan. Change that to ping message. And that's not greetings, it's payload. Hello ping. Let's see if the server recognizes that. Ping message detected payload hello ping. So there we have it. We have a protocol, pretty simple right now, uh, with two messages. Um, and we generated the uh, iPhone code for that. And then our client can send, actually the server can do that too. So but we can send a kind of um, a, a message of any kind. And then in our in the um, on the other end of the wire, we receive a message. We don't know what we are going to receive, but we still pass that from the, the, the data we get from the socket. And then we can uh, test all the descriptors we uh, we use. We have uh, that uh, uh, that has been have been generated by uh, Google protocol buffers, and then we can uh, act um, depending on what kind of message we receive. So that's, uh, that's, that's good. Um, uh, see how long has it been since uh, we've been live, we've been live for uh, 40 minutes. So let's try and figure out why we, we were not able to send a response to our client, okay? So, client address, uh, accept with client, data get client.receive, okay? So why can't we do this when we receive a ping? Why can't we send a pong back? Why? that and I was expecting uh, any equals any and any back on and then I was expecting that client that send let's let's try send let's try send any dot there you go. I was expecting that to work. Uh, is our client? Uh, yes, the client is sending a ping message. So let's try that. Huh? It didn't crash. Okay, so maybe we need now to read something, read some response. How do we do that? Well, I guess we do the same thing we did here, which is uh, that. Uh, except that from the socket. I want to receive that. And let's try and print whatever we get from the server. Okay. Oh, we're getting the response. So I don't know what I did earlier that uh, upset, that did upset the, the um, server. Okay, so let's do the same thing. We're going to use a, we're going to pass from string. Uh, actually, we probably already have an instance of any. Maybe we don't need to reset that. And now we need to unpack that into a pong message. Yes, so that's what we need. We're going to put that over here. Uh, pong message. Received. received, received, yeah, I don't know how to spell that, 
And let's run the clans. Phone message received. Greetings. All right. We do have an interaction between our client and our server. The client is sending a phone message. The uh, server is sending a the client server is sending a ping message. The server is sending a phone message back. So now what I, I want to do is do something. I want to just change that. So we're going to call that the ping message. Ping. Page and we're going to the phone page and we're even going to change the number so we are sure that we're not making any mistakes okay uh, okay so the message is ping ping the ping message equals hello ping we pack that we send that we receive a phone message that we can write so that's great we go to the server now um we're not gonna receive a phone message so that doesn't matter that's this anyway if ping we unpack the ping message we said ping message received we write the ping message we get a new phone message but the phone message here i want that to be the ping that ping message okay and then send that back and then i want to do something like if ping the ping message is not that's different from phone the phone message then print something when wrong Else, and all is good. Uh, why? That's not thing. That's message. Okay. Why not? Can I rename this thing? Yes. Alright. Let's. Uh, we start our server and do this. All is good because we received the same message. This message we did send. Let's uh, pretend something uh, is not working. Like, let's do this. Okay. So now we should have uh, an error. Something went wrong. Okay. That's good. That's good. We're uh, we're talking to uh, to the client and to the server. So that's the basis uh, of of what I'm going to implement in Streamberry. I'm going to uh, make those two components talk to each other like that. Um, why don't I go back to the uh, chat and webcam view? Uh, yes. So. Basically, that's what I'm going to implement in the um, client and the server. Um, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of messages. Well, we didn't. Well, I didn't show you that we can we can embed messages. Basically, it's like uh, having um, attribute of a class in Python or C sharp or whatever that is an instance of another object. So we could have. Uh, in, in the sample, if you go um, and have a look at the, the sample for the um, Python protobuf, um, they actually show how to embed a telephone number inside a person message. Um, so it, it, it's really working like uh, classes in any uh, object oriented language. Uh, so, uh, what I'm probably going to do next time is show a little bit of graphics because so far we've seen some code we've seen we've realized that we can connect a client to a server um i'm, I'm going to create um well actually um 48 minutes i still have uh, some time so let's let's try and do something Let's try and do something. 
Um, we are going to have something like that. We're going to have a page. Uh, a page is going to have a number. So optional in 32 number. This one. And it's going to have a list of buttons. So we're going to have a message button. Okay. That button is going to have a label and probably uh, more stuff. Uh, why? Uh, equals one. Okay. So we're going to have a label and then we are going to have a repeated button buttons those two. So a page has a certain, num uh, a certain number of buttons. Actually, we should probably have an int32. Uh, that's not going to be a number. Let's... Uh, oh yeah, uh, let's... Let, uh, let's call that ID. And then we're going to have here a length. It's not really the length, but I don't know how to call it any uh, otherwise. Uh, expected semicolon, yes. Thank you. All right, so page and some buttons. So let's change our server. In response to ping, it's not going to send back a phone message, but it's going to send back a page and a list of buttons. Page equals page. Um, we need to auto import page and it did that for us here. Okay, um, what do we have in page? We have uh, an ID, so page.id equals zero, page.length is going to be, let's say we're going to have two buttons, right? Uh, that's the length, and now we have buttons. So button one equals page that buttons that add, I think. Button one dot label equals label one, and then button two equals page that buttons that add, and button two dot label equals label two. Okay. We need to pack that into our uh, any um, instance. So any equal uh, any dot pack page. Um, then we need to send uh, that. So that's uh, client that send uh, any dot pass uh, to string. No, serialize to stream, not serialize partial to stream. Okay. That should work. That should work. See? It does send lots of stuff here. Okay. We need something wrong, yes. Because we are not expecting a page. So let's um, do that here. We're sending the ping. And then we're receiving the data, uh, we're passing, and then we want that to be a page. So page equals page. And we want to import that. It's done. Thank you. And any that unpack on page and print page. And I think we're going to. Uh, yes, so ID 0, length 2, buttons, level, level 1, level 2. So now we can um, we can think about what is going to be displayed on the first page, page uh, ID 0. And uh, I think in part 3 of this series, I'm going to start and write a little bit of um, Qt5, uh, by Qt5 code to display those um, those buttons. Um, 
I don't know yet how I'm going to serialize the icons, but I'm going to think about that. Um, maybe I'm going to embed the icons. Oh, I can't do that because if we're thinking about how the uh, stream deck works, there's a program on the, on the PC to which the stream deck is connected. And, and I realized that I was on the, um, the chat view instead of the full screen view uh, the whole time I did my uh, modification. So let's uh, go quickly over that. So on the server, I did that. Uh, on the sample proto, I did that. So the button has a label and the uh, page has an ID, length, and uh, buttons. And buttons has a special. It's not. not it's not optional. This um, this attribute. It's repeated. Repeated means zero or more instance of that particular class. So we're gonna have as many buttons as we want. That's why we have the length here. Uh, then in our server, when we get a ping message, we build the page uh, mes uh, mes uh, message. Yes, uh, we set the ID, we set the length. We said that uh, it's hard to it right now, but uh, it's going to be dynamic later on. And then we add a button, and it says level one. Then we add another button. It has a uh, another la label label. Then we pack everything and we send that back to the client. And on the client side, we just unpack the page and print the that. Right. Uh, yes. So next, next uh, um, episode, if I can say so, um, we'll be writing some PyQt5 code to get those uh, those buttons. And I, as I was saying, so the uh, Stream Deck does that. Um, there's a program, a con something to configure the Stream Deck on the PC, and then you assign an icon and it sends the icons to the device and then the icon is on the device. So that's what I want to do. I don't know yet how I can do that. I'm going to have a look at the protocol buffer documentation, see if I can um, add some binary da data to the protocol. Probably. I don't see why I wouldn't, I couldn't do that. And I would, I will then send the, um, the icons. I'm going to have to have a look, uh, see if it's, because they're gonna be small icons, 64 by 64 uh, pixels. Maybe having a BMP is going to be smaller than having a PNG or something. Although the PNG has the, the transparency, that could be useful too. I don't know yet. I'm going to have a, have a look at that. So that's it for this stream. Um, it's going to stay on Twitch for uh, about a week, I think. And it's also going to be on my YouTube channel. Uh, all the links will be in the um, description of this video. You can find that on twitch.tv slash FrenchGuyCH. Um, YouTube is a little more complex because uh, I'm, I don't have a personalized, personalized URL yet. Uh, I don't think it's uh, going to happen anytime soon. Um, the best way to get in touch with me would be to send me an email at yannick at frenchguy.ch or um, on Telegram, you can join the uh, Makers Corner uh, podcasts uh, Telegram channel. Uh, that's uh, that's the, 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 the channel that is uh, related the, the best fit for this uh, this stream uh, t.me slash makers corner tech I think mm, I have to check I don't even remember the name of my of my uh, group so that's t.me slash makers corner pod that's the thing if you want to join this uh, channel it's a low traffic channel so you won't be uh, Overwhelm with messages. Uh, Mika's Corner is a podcast that I record every other week with my friend Nate. So check that out at Mika's Corner the Tech. Um, you can also uh, subscribe to this channel or follow this channel on other Twitch 
uh, terminology. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, I will be streaming the recording. Um, well, I, I, I won't be streaming that on this channel, but I'm hosting the other channel uh, for my uh, Tea Are We Hot podcast, which is a podcast about Star Trek. Uh, we're going to review another episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine Season 1 um, while we wait for new Star Trek series to um, be released. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can you can find me on Twitter also, uh, French Guy CH on Twitter, if you want to send me uh, a a message uh, there you can you can at me as uh, people say <laughs> uh, I will be back so tomorrow for tea or gray hot and probably Thursday or Friday uh, for part three of um, stream berry so thank you for watching uh, subscribing following activating all those bells and whistles and I will see you pretty soon. I still don't have that uh, end of stream channel, so I'm going to stop streaming right now. Thank you. Goodbye.